Hey guys, I hate to interrupt, but I just wanted to take a moment to say if you're studying for the CPA exams and you like the visual learning approach that we take in this video, definitely check out Universal CPA Review's free trial. You can do this by going to www.universalcpareview.com or you can click on the link in the description of this video. From there, you could take a sneak peek at Universal's platform, which includes animated video lectures, study guides, and practice questions with task-based simulations that come with video explanations that walk you through the solution step-by-step, -step, kind of like having a tutor by your side. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back to it. Okay, so at this point, we've talked about property, plant, and equipment, but we talked about property, plant, and equipment that has been purchased and basically we're saying that that PP&E was being valued at historical cost. And that cost would also include additional associated costs that would bring it to completion and ready to be used. Okay, but now we're talking about a situation where we're not purchasing the property, plant, and equipment. We're talking about a situation where this property, plant, and equipment is being constructed, right? We're manufacturing the building. We're manufacturing the machinery. That is now going to be used for our business. Okay, so this is all about self-constructed property, plant, and equipment. And this is going to be heavily emphasizing a concept called capitalized interest costs. Okay, so when in doubt, map it out. We're going to pull out our mental map here and we have four primary steps that we need to zone in on when it comes to capitalized interest costs. Step one, we're going to determine the weighted average of accumulated expenditures. Step two, we're going to determine the interest expense incurred, but that's going to be different from step three, which is the determination of avoidable interest. All right, we're going to wrap this up by going through the actual interest cost that is being capitalized and how to determine the interest expense that is being reported on the income statement. Okay, so stick to our mini steps and you'll be able to navigate your way through these topics that can be somewhat complicated. Okay, so let's start slow. Let's start by thinking about what is this capitalized interest cost really talking about. Okay, so when it comes to self-constructed property, plant, and equipment, many situations will result where the company constructing this PP&E will actually finance this with debt. Okay, so when debt is associated, interest will generally be associated. And that interest cost is frequently going to be what is being capitalized. So all of a sudden now, there are situations where we're going to capitalize the interest that is associated with the overall value of the property, plant, and equipment that is sitting on our books, all right? So there's a lot of details that we need to understand, but we're gonna start from the beginning. So when it comes to self-constructed PP&E, we're going to have three primary costs, right? We have direct materials, we have direct labor, and overhead costs, right? Pretty straightforward cost accounting stuff. But what if debt is being used? That is the ultimate question that the FAR exam wants you to be able to digest. And US GAAP wants us to capitalize actual cost incurred during this construction. Okay, and we're going to do this by applying this to a weighted average amount of accumulated expenditures. Right, so this is going to be the total accumulated expenditures that have to do with this construction project. And this is what we said is step one in our mental map. And we need to be able to make this calculation work. So let's go through this by going through a quick example. We got Landon Corp once again. Now Landon is constructing their barn. Okay, so they're going to do this on top of the newly acquired land. The total construction expenditures are as follows. On March 31st, year one, they had $120,000 in expenditures, and they had another 60,000. September 30th, year one, 100,000. And finally, on the last day of the year, December 31st, year one, they had $90,000. So we want to determine the weighted average expenditures for the current year. But this is how it's going to work. We're going to take each individual payment and we're going to focus on the fraction of the year remaining. Okay, so because the first payment of $120,000 was done on March 31st, year one, we got nine twelfths of the year remaining. Okay, so $120,000 times nine twelfths gives us $90,000. Payment number two, $60,000. That's going to have a fraction of six twelfths of the year remaining. Okay, so six twelfths times 60,000 gives us 30,000. And 100,000 is going to have three twelfths of the year remaining. Okay, so that was conducted on September 30th, year one. They got October, November, and December left. So 100,000 times three twelfths gives us $25,000. 
And finally, the last payment was made on the last day of the year. So there's no time left in the year. Okay, so that's going to be a big fat zero. So now we can calculate the weighted average accumulated expenditures for the current year. We're just going to add this up. 90,000 plus 30,000 plus 25,000 gives us a total amount of $145,000. Step one is complete. Let's take a quick break and catch our breath. Woo. If you like what you see in this video, well, you're not alone. Okay, many students who studied with Universal CPA Review have found a ton of success. And if you don't believe me, you could take a look at our reviews on Trustpilot. Trustpilot is the most legitimate third-party review site that ensures that our reviews are completely legitimate. Universal CPA Review is not only the best CPA exam study option for visual learners, but it's also the most cost-effective option out there. So if you've already spent thousands of dollars on another CPA review course, we totally understand and we want to help you out. So take a look at our free seven day trial and see if Universal CPA Review is for you. You can start your free trial by going to www.universalcpareview.com or you can take a look at the link in the description of this video. Okay, so there are two types of interest costs associated with the concept that is capitalization of interest. Okay, so we're going to focus on the interest expense incurred, and we're going to focus on what's referred to as our avoidable interest, all right? But we'll get there in a second. There are two types of debts that you need to be aware of. Each of these respective debts will have interest that is associated with them. So the first type of debt is going to be previous debt. So we're going to determine interest on other previous debts. When I say that, I mean interest on debt that is not specified for this PP&E construction project. Okay, so this is things like our bonds, it's notes payable, it's this additional debt that is sitting on our books. But this debt is going to be important to focus in on because it is the only debt that is not specified for the construction project. And it is this type of debt that we will apply the weighted average interest rate. Okay, so how do we apply the weighted average interest rate? Okay, so what we're going to do is take a look at this quick mini example, right? In year one, let's say there's a $20,000 loan with an 8% interest rate. Okay, so that means that we have $1,600 in annual interest. Let's say in year two, there's a $10,000 loan with a 6% interest rate, meaning we have $600 in annual interest. So because this is a debt that is not associated with the construction project specifically, we're going to take the weighted average interest rate. So we're gonna take the 8%, we're going to add it to the 6%, and we're just gonna divide it by two. All right, so the weighted average rate in this case would be 7%. Okay, but then we also have debt that is specifically associated with the construction project. So in which case we're just, so when it comes to the actual capitalization of the interest amounts, what we're going to do is always take the lesser of the actual cost incurred and the total avoidable interest. All right, so the interest expense incurred is going to be the amount incurred on the debt no matter what. The actual avoidable interest is going to be the amount that is spent. So there's a big difference between the amount that is incurred and the amount that is spent. Okay, so you might be wondering why do they call it avoidable interest? Basically what we're saying is had this construction project never taken place, the interest on this other debt would be considered avoidable. Right. Basically what we're saying is we never would have applied this to the construction project without this specific debt. All right, so our avoidable interest is going to be separated from the amount of interest expense that is calculated on the loan. All right, when I say that I mean the loan specified for the construction project. Okay, so very important that we remember that capitalized interest is always going to be the lesser of the amount of interest expense incurred and the amount of interest that is avoidable. Okay, so Let's go through a quick example because we also need to know what amount is going to be reported as the interest expense in the financial statements, all right? So Landon Corp, once again, is constructing a barn on top of this newly acquired land. The interest amounts associated with the total weighted average expenditures are as follows. Interest on the incurred interest expense is going to be $45,000. Avoidable interest is 35,000. So we wanna determine the amount of interest expense that would be capitalized and the amount that will be reported on Landon Corp's income statement. Okay, so killing two birds with one stone here, if you will. So the lesser of the two is going to be our capitalized interest. So the lesser of the two is given to us. 35,000 is less than 45,000. That is going to be the total capitalized interest. 
All right, so when we determine the amount that is reported on the income statement, it is always going to be reported as the difference between the actual cost incurred and the avoidable interest. So in this case, $10,000 is the difference. That's the amount that is reported in the income statement.